Jumping on in, uh, uh, when you were making Not Another Teen Movie, Cellular, My finest work. Right, uh, early in the career, are you sort of like, can you sort of remember the, like, the dream of getting to where you are and sort of like taking a moment now, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause, well, but it's so funny how it evolved, you know, because you think that was part of like the whole, when, when the Captain America stuff came around, you kind of take like a little bit of a gut check and, you know, when you first get to L.A., you're so excited to be there and there's this competitive fire and this desire to get to a certain place but it's all brand new and there's no downside and you really don't understand you don't understand anything so you just kind of want to fight and, and, and get there and then as you kind of continue and you you make movies and you realize you start to see some of the some of the pros and cons of the situation and then you think well maybe what I wanted isn't exactly what I wanted you know what I mean maybe I kind of want to find a you know, I think at the beginning you think I want to be the biggest movie star in the world, and then the more movies you make, you're like, well, I don't know if I want to be that anymore. I think, I think what I'm looking for is something different. You know, I, I like acting, but a lot of times stardom comes with a lot of strings attached. You know, and then you look at other careers. There are just other careers out there, like you know, you look at someone like a Sam Rockwell or something like that. He's done so many great movies, so much respect from his peers, fantastic actor. But I'm sure he can walk down the street without any you know, bother. Sure. You know? and, and that's when you start to think, all right, maybe there's a happy medium. So then, as you go in your career, you start thinking you have to tailor some choices. So when the Captain America thing came along, you think, all right, if I do this. It, it, which direction am I going in? You know what I mean? Is is this the direction that I thought I wanted when I was 18, or is this the direction that I've tailored my goals to at you know 28, 29, 30? Um, so it's a little more apprehensive. I, I don't even know what the question was anymore. I no, I, I know. I know exactly what you're saying. But a lot of people don't realize that you were very apprehensive about signing on for that role, yeah. and that ultimately. Like what's funny is later in the interview I was going to say to you that like I believe most of the Marvel people had to sign eight nine picture deals yeah. and I heard with you it was more like a five picture deal. We got six, you know, which was good because initially it was nine and I, well, I can't do nine. Yeah. But even six, man, six you can do six over ten years. That's sure. a big commitment. To I don't know. But isn't there something to be said? Like, like I think like one of the reasons why it's great seeing you in this movie is that you disappear in the role. Like, sure. it's, you don't even realize it's you. Yeah. But don't you also think, though, that being a part of the Marvel Universe, and especially with, like, Avengers making so much money, um, like, like it has to be a little bit rewarding, though, that, like, your work's being seen and appreciated by, like, millions around this planet. Yeah. You know? There has to be something to that. Without question. Without question. And not only that, it's, it's work... I got this movie because of that. You know what I mean? If I hadn't done that, you know, James Franco had this role and he fell out. And when he fell out, I know Ariel as a friend, but he called and basically said, listen, you know, I know how independent films work. They obviously crunched the numbers and putting me in the role worked uh, sure. for the numbers. You know what I mean? Foreign sales, whatever you want to call it. That wouldn't have happened without Cap. That wouldn't have happened without Avengers. So I owe a lot to that. And it is nice to have your work seen. It really is. It really is. Um, because perhaps also there's going to be an audience out there that seeks this out, your Marvel fans. Yeah, That yeah. would be like, oh, I want to see him in this now. Yeah. See, I guess you know what it comes down to? I'm such a, I'm such a little bitch. <laughs> I don't know what my issue is. No, I, I actually know what you're saying. It's I'm because... such a fucking whiny bitch, man. Like, I... Uh, no, I know, I know what you're saying. And maybe it's not coming... To be clear, so maybe I'm picking up on it. You are making the... You are trying to... Right. You're trying to weigh... Do I want to be on the star path? Yeah. Do I want to make movies that are like true indies? Well, do, how do I do both? Do I even want to... See, this is the issue. And this is what... I wish my agent was here. We've had this conversation a lot lately. What's the goal? Is my goal to be a giant movie star? And you start to realize, at least I have in the past couple years, that's not my goal. And it's a very strange thing to realize. It's a very strange thing. Because when I moved to LA 18... That's the goal. The goal is to like get to a point in your career where you can make the movies you want to make and do what you want to do and have access and freedom and you know you want to climb the ladder. You know what I mean? And it's, it's the, even just the competitor in you wants to earn. You know, but then these things start happening and. I was going to say because we're we're 
on a real tangent here that I want to I want to bring us back to because I have I want to ask about Snowpiercer and all this other stuff. Yeah. But I would say the most important thing, and I say this as friend slash journalist slash whatever. Yeah. I think the most important thing is that. The Marvel movies are fucking awesome. They I'm are. I'm so happy that Jaws Whedon signed on to be part of the universe. Aren't they good, man? They're, they're, I and it's so crazy because they don't make those big studio movies. Let's be honest. How many times you go to a movie and see a giant studio movie and walk away happy? Yo, listen. Not often. Like, with Jaws signing on, signing on so for, for Avengers 2, with him being part of the Marvel universe, yeah. I'm sure you got to get him to tweak the Cap 2 script no matter what. Yeah. Get him to work on yeah. it. Yeah. Like, the fact of the matter is, if, if I'm you and I just say this as an outsider, you make sure that when you're not making the Marvel movies, you are picking the best scripts you can mm. that give you the most um, diverse range to show your talent. That's why that's I do it. things like this, just because... That's it. And that's, that's the goal, you know? I'll do the Marvel thing, and that's the studio thing, that's my obligation, and they're great, and I'm very lucky that I happen to be under a contract with a fantastic family, a fantastic franchise. Yeah, they're but not going to make bad movies. They're not going to do bad movies. Right, they're not going to do bad And I love being the character, and I love being a part of the team, and it's, it's the best... If you got to be under a six-picture contract, you can't find a better one. I've always wanted to know this, and tell me real quick. If you do a cameo as Cap in, say, Thor 2, like the end... That counts to, to the contract. Does it? Yeah. Maybe we'll talk when this is off about how that's already affected... That's happened. That's happened. Well, that's what I mean, because... It, I, because you, you can go through the Marvel movies and see where that's happened. Yeah. And where that's affected... Contracts, one hundred percent. Because I say, like, here's the thing: like, I love those buttons in the credits. Sure. I love those interconnected tissue, and like, I love you as Cap. I'm telling, I'm talking to you as like a fan, yeah. as well as like representing fandom. Like, you're real good at it. It's like, I want it. Like, I really hope that when the six pictures are up, that you had such a good time that you would want to maybe do more. Oh God, Hemsworth and I even talked about that. Like, I'd love to do a little thing in Thor too. I, you know, I mean, that's you know, it's obviously going to be tricky trying to work out the 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 plot you know sure. the reason why I'm not sure. there to help him and why he's not there to help me but right. the best thing about Marvel is that like, like I said the movies were so good we had such a good time making them Marvel is such a great company to work for it feels like everyone just wants to pitch in it feels yeah. like everyone why would I not want to help I'm not going to hold them over the coals and be like, well, it's my contract, and guess what? I'm screwing you. Right. You know, let's let's just make this great. Let's just make this great. If I can help that great and make it better, let's do it. Sure. I, I really, I hope that all works out, but I, let me ask one of the questions yeah. that someone asked me. I, first of all, you mentioned to me you're on Twitter. Are you really on Twitter? Yeah, I got on Twitter, I got on Twitter like two months ago. Okay, so what's your, what's your ad address? Do you know? At Chris Evans. Oh, so that's really what it is? I think that's what it is, yeah. Oh, right, cool. I don't even know what that means, right, right? It was yeah, right, right. At Chris at Evans. Chris, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you basically have, because I know a lot of actors have people helping them with Twitter. Are, are they help? Are you getting help? Or no, nobody you... helps me. That's just me. Um, but when I first got on it, I was like, this is great. And for the first month, I was like, tweet, 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 tweet. I haven't tweeted in like... Right, okay. A month and a half or something, I don't know. I will make sure I start following you after, uh, <laughs> later today. Um, so, some of the questions I got off of Twitter. Uh, what was more uh, uncomfortable, the wig in this or the suit? Ooh, the suit. <laughs> the wig, you forget it's on, you know what I mean? It's a bitch getting it on, but then after ten minutes you forget it's even there. Um, okay. The suit, you're fully aware. <laughs> totally. Constantly. Uh, you got to work with Michael Shannon, who is a very gifted actor. Sure is. Talk a little bit about getting to work with him and uh, just, like, you know, walking away from that experience. Yeah. Well, he's just fantastic. He's so committed. He's so, you know, you get him offset. He's a happy guy and he's a cupcake. Nicest guy on the planet. And joking and laughing. I'm having a bottle of wine. I'm having a good time. But then on set, the guy has a focus and a commitment and a, a dedication. And it, it, that, that, that type of... Uh, Intensity, it, it breeds allegiance, you know what I mean? When you're around a guy who's so uh, in his own, um, you can't, it's infectious. Um, so, so and, and he's, his, his acting style is so grounded, you know what I mean? And with this character, um, you know, this my, my character is pretty out there. So you try different levels, you know, you might try the first take here and the next take here and the next take here. And, you know, you, as you rise up, Michael stays steady and almost acts as an anchor and, you know, after you try things kind of further and further off the wall, you kind of feed off of him and it brings it back down to a, a neutral place or a realistic place, you know, so it's, it's like playing basketball with, with you know, Michael Jordan, he's just going to make you better.